Uh, Debbie and I both saw a short video of uh, Uvalde, the parents <sighs> imploring these law enforcement officials, like, go in there. There's there's a massacre underway. We are the parents. We'll go in without guns. Um, and the cops are basically like, you're not helping. Step back. And, and I mean, I obviously your heart goes with the parents. Yes. Um, yes. And they had apparently called for backup and backup arrived. And, and as you made the point, the, the law enforcement officials on the scene were they didn't have tactical gear. Um, maybe they weren't equipped to be able to yeah. kind of go in. Well, and I also made the point um, that you were like, well, how is it that it takes so long to get these these p tactical people in there and, all, and et cetera, et cetera? This is, U Uvalde is a very, very sleepy town in South Texas. A, a lot, a whole lot doesn't go, ha you know, happen every day around there. So, so people aren't just waiting around to go in into a situation like this. Uh, things like this don't happen in little sleepy towns like this, right? I know. So, yeah. so unfortunate, you know, people leave their doors unlocked, their cars unlocked. The school left the, the door unlocked, you know, that kind of thing happens. And so, of course, parents were just beca mortified because, number one, apparently this kid was making all kinds of ruckus for a long period of time before he even went in the school. Apparently, he was shooting at some funeral home. I don't know if you heard about this, no. but he was apparently shooting at some some people in a funeral home, and then he he re you know wrecked his car in some some ditch or something, uh, got out of it, uh, starts shooting like just randomly for for twelve to fifteen minutes before he even went in the school. So I think I think what the parents were upset about is that listen, this is one guy, one person doing this. Why couldn't you have stopped him before he even went in the, into the school, right? Right. Let alone follow him in. And then when and you have multiple <clears throat> police officers, yeah, obviously yeah. each of them go to shooting yes. ranges and they practice. Yes. So they should <clears throat> be able to do something. Now, yep. let's turn for a moment to the NRA because mm -hmm. they're having their convention. Mm -hmm. uh, I noticed that there are some people who have who are going to be there who have canceled. Apparently, who's the guy who sang American Pie? He was supposed to perform. Yeah. And, and Lee Greenwood. Lee also. Greenwood. Yeah. Uh, apparently, even Abbott is not. Abbott's going to do a tape message, mm -hmm. but he's not going to be there. Um, now, the NRA might have considered. I mean, if I were the NRA, I would not cancel the convention. And my reasoning would be to do that is to concede the point. The left's point that somehow the NRA is responsible for this. A responsible gun ownership is somehow responsible for what happened in Uvalde. Mm -hmm. And the, the opposite is true. Right. In fact, if there was responsible gun possession among some of the people at the school, this would not have happened. Right. And I, you know, I am a member of the NRA. Um, I'm a card carrying member. Uh, I'm, well, actually, I need to re sign up. You need to renew. I, think I need to renew my, my membership. But see, the NRA is made up of responsible gun owners across the country. And so I think I think that you, you made a point because I said, well, you know, maybe they should have canceled given the circumstances. And you said, yeah, but to do that would be to give it to the left, saying that, you know, we are, in fact, Guilty that the problem, is the, the problem gun. is the gun and that a convention yeah. about guns is somehow to yeah, blame. Exactly. Uh, of course, this is what the left, the left doesn't really like to accept human evil as residing in humans. Mm -hmm. For the left, human evil is somehow transferred to this inanimate object called but the gun. But not always. Not, not but not always. always. If it's a car, they're not calling for car, uh, you know, uh, to get rid of your cars, right? Right. So, because a lot of people have have killed with knives and and cars and bats and other things, mm -hmm. right? And even their hands. Right. So, um, so no, it, it it's a particular inanimate object that they hate, and that is a gun. Right. Um, so uh, they do hate guns, but you know, I was telling you that I feel like for me knowing that there are some evil people out there, crazy evil people out there with guns, I want to be able to protect myself with a gun so that I can stop this evil person because as we've seen here, as we saw in Parkland and other cases, we can't always rely on law enforcement to be there immediately when this is happening. And if you are trained, if you know how to use a weapon, 
you might be able to stop these lunatics. I mean, think of any situation, not just a school shooting. If someone is being robbed or raped or attacked, what is the probability that law enforcement is going to either be there on the scene already no. or get there in a time to prevent the attack it's itself? Not That's almost never. It's not happening. So, so I feel like this is more of a call for me to want to have a weapon. I do, as you know, but. But I just feel like a, a law-abiding citizen should be able to protect themselves from these lunatics that have guns. I mean, it's a whole separate question as to how our society seems to be spitting out these kinds of lunatics by the, you know, by the bus load, if you will. Uh, and that's a that's a longer term problem to deal with. But in the shorter term, regardless of how we're creating these monsters, they do need to be stopped.